a short introduction to my short lecture. Two points. First of all, as of world energy, uh, the crisis uh, which was behind the oil shocks in 2008, uh, their um, uh, main causes of this crisis and main causes of oil shocks were the speculative activity uh, on NEMEX in the uh, uh, United States. Uh, I studied day by day, followed the events, and came to conclusion, uh, and not only me, some independent American experts also came to conclusion that there was no fundamental um, uh, some changes, supply and demand, or something like this, behind the skyrocketing price of uh, oil uh, which was in mid of uh, July, um, uh, $147 per barrel. It was not, it was simply anomaly. It was not normal price. I, in my writings and in my lectures and in my presentations here in Moscow and outside Moscow and outside my country, I always insisted that if you are talking of, about just uh, it's wide, widespread uh, term, just price. Uh, if you are talking just price uh, based on economical factors, economical fundamentals, then uh, my opinion was that uh, if it is not world crisis, price must be something between 80 and maximum 100, maximum 100, uh, because uh, of some changes uh, in the shifts, uh, sometimes very deep shifts in the oil and gas markets. Uh, but it happened so that, uh, you know, every, maybe every one of you knows that in America, mortgage crisis started uh, in 2007 and earlier, earlier. And uh, of course, uh, hedge funds, uh, investment, investment funds, even pension funds, and uh, understood that it is dangerous to stay on this sector, and they jumped, uh, leave this sector, and uh, jumped to oil and uh, gold uh, sector. And then that's why price was not real. The growth of uh, oil price was not real, and uh, it was practically not physical oil was traded not physical, virtual oil, derivatives, just papers. Uh, and uh, uh, that's why uh, it was uncontrolled by anybody. Uh, NIMEX is NIMEX, uh, and the exchanges exchange. It was a big mistake in early 80s when uh, the uh, oil start trading in uh, uh, not in contra by contracts or long term or short term or sport market, but trading in uh, uh, NIMEX. Uh, WTI, this is the name of a uh, small Texas oil company who put in uh, year uh, in 82, uh, put the, his oil, and this was the start of new era of world market. Why, after mid of July, price go and went down? Because of political uh, aspects of struggle for parliamentary uh, con congressional election and presidential election in the United States. And Democrats insisted that this is a speculative activity behind this. And Bush was rejecting this. Um, idea has saying that, no, 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 it's not uh, my experts uh, and told me that it is fundamentals behind this. And uh, uh, actually, uh, Congress hired two independent experts, and they analyzed day by day, half a year in 2008, from January till uh, 1st July, and uh, they understood that it's absolutely speculative something, because uh, supply and demand, balanced supply and demand was flat. 
and they made a presentation in Congress about this, and then Democrats ordered to uh, commission for uh, futures, uh, futures trade in Wall Street, uh, to do something about this. And they arrested two or three uh, businessmen, oil businessmen, apply, not oil business, but just businessmen, speculative businessmen in Emex. And since then, immediately in one week, price, uh, they took uh, $40 billion from this sector, and then price go down, down, and down till $40 uh, dollars per barrel, and even in some days, $30. Uh, dollars. This is very important to understand because even my government here, and my some ministries, and even some uh, minister of finance or an, uh, deputy uh, to uh, president of our Russian bank, they are always dreaming about 147, but I am telling to them, uh, it's unrealistic. This never will be repeated. If it will be repeated, it will be still one second crisis. Second crisis follow, and uh, you, are, you must be more realistic in your politics. And not beat just uh, what Goldman Sachs is saying, but Goldman Sachs was saying in the first part of 2008 that price of oil by the end of 2008 will be 250. Uh, that's, can you imagine what kind of experts are doing such an analysis? Well, and uh, 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 so um, uh, I, maybe I, I must uh, end this my introduction because uh, time is running, and uh, I directly go to Russia. Uh, <clears throat> or more, just two words. How this influenced on oil market behavior of oil business, especially big oil business, uh, majors, super majors. Uh, I noticed that they are not so frightened by crisis not so frightened by these uh, price shocks up and down. When interviewed, they always said, crisis, okay, today is crisis, but it's not forever. And in a year or two, there will be a post-crisis period, and we must be ready to this. And so just one group of figures uh, which was uh, made um, uh, in the report of the deep water investment um, uh, made by uh, Douglas Westwood, an analytical uh, um, institution. Uh, they checked approximately 800 uh, presidents and uh, operators of uh, oil and gas sector, and they found out that they are ready to invest in 2009, 2013, in five years, to invest $162 billion in deep, only in sector of deep water uh, uh, offshore, uh, offshore uh, uh, drilling, uh, upstream uh, sector. Uh, and the breakdown is very interesting. Six, 60 billion in Africa, especially in the Western um, um, offshore of Africa, uh, th that means uh, Nigeria, Angola, and Equatorial Guinea, these three, three countries predominantly. 29.3 uh, billion was for North America. Uh, this was predominantly uh, for uh, Mexican Gulf, but you know such a tragedy happened there with British Petroleum, and maybe it will be reconsidered, uh, this figure. And $29 billion was allocated um, for Latin America, predominantly for Brazil, because now there is a kind of Klondike type uh, rush of all businesses uh, engaged in oil and gas to Brazil. Even China donated um, $10 billion invested in Petrobras activity, and, and so on and so on. Uh, and finally, uh, 14.6 uh, billion to Asia. So you see that uh, business was not crying and just making some preparation, action, and so. 
till now, they are continuing to say that, okay, we are going to, recently, just several days ago, Shell says, uh, um, not British Petroleum, um, and Exxon said that they are going to invest 20 billion in the next year, uh, 30 billion next year, and that kind of stuff. Now Russia. Uh, you know, uh, of course our uh, big business in Russia, especially in oil, like many other businesses, were crying that, oh, we suffer from crisis, huh? but when you take uh, information in newspapers about uh, their profits, they are there not disappeared. Profits uh, last year and today, uh, this year uh, are very good. Uh, uh, and uh, they uh, were crying not only because uh, they understood that our government is ready to, to, to do something to help our business, uh, like, like it was happening in America and some other European countries. And uh, so, um, practically, uh, uh, I can uh, stop uh, because of a shortage of time on two, two um, themes, two topics. Um, uh, what uh, important change happened in Russia uh, last year and uh, uh, this uh, year also. Uh, first uh, change was that crisis forced our government to be more active and to pay more attention to our Asian part. Russia is not only a European country. The majority of our territory is uh, af after Ural. Uh, Urals are practically in Asia. And uh, we are always talking, talking that it's important to have economic cooperation with uh, Asia Pacific countries and uh, that kind of stuff. But this was just uh, on, on the paper. Now the government, Alongside with um, deciding to build a huge pipeline, oil pipe, uh, pipeline, um, which is uh, called uh, in Russian Sto, which means East Siberia, Pacific Ocean. Um, and uh, uh, this pipeline, uh, first stage is already finished. And um, uh, immediately they started second uh, uh, stage. And uh, from both sides, not only continuation of pipeline, but also building uh, oil terminal in, Vladio, uh, in um, and, um, Kazmino. It's really near uh, Vladivostok. Maybe you hear uh, about such a nice place. Uh, and uh, Kazmino Bay, uh, terminal for um, and, um, oil tankers. And uh, also, uh, there are some agreements with uh, foreign companies to build there uh, by the uh, time when the pipeline will be absolutely finished, uh, to build the uh, refinery uh, with capacity of 20 million uh, tons of oil. So it's very uh, impressive. Uh, but uh, most interesting was the new project, which was initiated by Mr. Putin himself, uh, to build a new gas system in uh, our um, eastern Siberia and Russian Far East. Uh, it's, it will be three stages. One stage already started last year. Uh, it is a pipeline going from Sakhalin. Uh, Sakhalin 1 we, uh, operator is uh, Exxon, but uh, they has nothing to do with building this pipeline. Um, uh, pipeline from Sakhalin via Khabarovsk to Vladivostok. This is first stage, and it's already in, uh, in place. And uh, uh, on time, I mean, uh, 2000, uh, by 2012, it will be finished. Uh, this is for sure, because uh, there will be Vladivostok big covering uh, of all um, uh, Asian uh, Pacific uh, countries uh, annual uh, conference, first time in Russia. Uh, well, but uh, second stage, uh, which is also in stage of negotiations, practical negotiations with foreign companies, uh, it's Sakhalin Free Project. Uh, and uh, Putin uh, being in Tokyo last year, in May, uh, already 
directly talked with the um, Mitsui Mitsubishi, which are uh, uh, participant of uh, Sakhalin 2 project, which is producing LNG. And the uh, first LNG was shipped uh, in uh, February uh, last year. Uh, so uh, they practically agreed. I, I talked with the leaders of these companies, and uh, Mitsui especially is very interested in this, and uh, is ready to. And in June last year, uh, the negotiations were also with Shell Company, because Shell Company was still recently also operator of Sakhalin 2 project. So they are all inexperienced, all new, the situation, and they are invited to start Sakhalin 3. This is second stage, which must be finished by uh, 2014. And 2014 is uh, beginning of third stage. It's more far away in, in Yakutia, Republic of Saha. Uh, and uh, there are Chayanda um, field, uh, which is a rather big field. And the pipeline goes to the Vladivostok also to join these uh, uh, two um, stages uh, pipelines build. So it is uh, for uh, success of this business, uh, even, uh, government even ordered to Gazprom to postpone uh, uh, already started very big project in Yamal Peninsula, Bovanienkovskaya uh, field, which was intended to um, uh, provide gas to European market and maybe to uh, um, United States of America. But situation on markets changed. It's not so ta uh, task which must be immediately done because uh, Gazprom's share in the uh, European market went down. And uh, because of this, uh, part of the money uh, initially in, uh, intended for Bovanenkovska was tra transferred to Far East. Also some personnel, also some equipment. So they are really doing irrespective of crisis. No day spending uh, uh, in vain uh, realizing these projects. This is a, a very interesting and important uh, event. Uh, so uh, I think that in the next several years, our uh, uh, export uh, of um, oil and gas will be more balanced, not one-sided, uh, that everything was to um, West European. Uh, my advice is, uh, to government, to some corporations, is always that we must keep the same level uh, of relationship and uh, cooperation in energy uh, sphere with European countries, uh, even if there will be possibility to increase this, but concentrate now and allocate uh, enough money for Asian. Uh, um, after all, EU several years is talking and talking about uh, diversification of sources of uh, why we must not think about diversification of client, our clients, our consumers. Uh, and uh, mm, what happened uh, uh, last year, uh, very important, and I, maybe I am very optimistic uh, about this. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, that there is a event who means the starting of end of monopoly of Gazprom. Uh, I read a lot of articles and speeches uh, in Western uh, mass media and in liberal uh, newspapers of Russia about uh, menace, menace of monopolism uh, of Gazprom in European markets. I don't see. If you take statistics, there is a steady tendency, the declining of the Gazprom share in uh, uh, supply of uh, European countries. If you take 20, 25 years, it declined from 60%, which was the, uh, that time, uh, to 40, maximum 40%. So there is no monopoly. 
There are Norwegian uh, supplies, there are Algerian supplies, recently Libya uh, supplies, Egypt supplies, and now Qatar, if you are taking, uh, talking about gas, Qatar, uh, especially after uh, uh, boom of shale gas in the United States, Americans rejected all signed contracts with uh, Qatar, and uh, Qatar immediately moved this uh, free uh, gas, uh, LNG, uh, to European market. Uh, but what uh, gives me optimism that there will be some big serious change in internal monopoly, which is real. Unlike uh, outside monopoly of Gazprom, which is something fake and uh, uh, rubbish, uh, uh, in, in inside country, Gazprom really has monopoly. And uh, he has control of pipes, and without pipes, you, you can understand that gas is not going to any, anywhere, uh, only maybe used some uh, locally. And uh, there was some independents who years and years were complaining about this monopoly of uh, Gazprom. And uh, there was one company, Novatec, I remember the name of this company because he has big future. Uh, he was even in period of monopoly of Gazprom, were able to do something uh, because they were uh, using, uh, following new inventions in uh, innovations in technology, uh, very efficient uh, leadership. So uh, they already uh, were in good shape, but year two, 2009 uh, was a uh, real change because uh, they joined, make an alliance with uh, um, Minister, Mr. Uh, Timchenko, who doesn't know he is the uh, uh, biggest uh, uh, oil trader, Kunwar company, who is uh, responsible for export of 30%, 30% of Russian oil to, to Europe. Uh, and uh, Timchenko is known as a, uh, some say that he is a friend of Putin, some say that not friend, but close to Putin. Uh, in any case, Timchenko made deal with Novatek leadership, and uh, they uh, bought the shares of um, in, uh, in project. Uh, some, uh, Yamal SPG, SPG means LNG in English, uh, and this project is based on the very big, very gross uh, uh, gas field in Južna Tambejskaya, Južna Tambejskaya in, in Yamal Peninsula. And uh, then Tinchika sold 51% uh, because he, he was oil man, not ga gas business, and he sold to, he chose Novatec and sold to Novatec 51%, and the rest uh, of 23.6%, uh, uh, which still owned Timchenka, uh, uh, Novatec got option for three years to buy uh, this, and then uh, um, a newspaper man asked uh, leaders of uh, uh, Mr. Michelson, about what you are going to do with this 23.6% uh, of the um, equities. Uh, he said, it's for foreigners. I am going to uh, invite some foreigners, foreign companies uh, with new technology uh, to join me. And, uh, and he not just was saying this, I found out that he was al already in negotiations with different companies especially Total and many others, and, uh, Norwegian uh, Statoil and, and so on. So uh, you, you can see that there is a, a new uh, independent uh, 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 oil and gas company, uh, which is um, really start fighting with Gazprom's mon monopoly. They already started to uh, take uh, the clients of Gazprom, 
big clients of Gazprom, it's big electric stations, and, uh, uh, and they broke the contract with Gazprom and preferred to stay with Novatec because Novatec uh, was uh, providing the cheaper gas for them, not like Gazprom because of monopoly. And uh, uh, Mr. Timchenko also uh, uh, start doing something not only in oil trading in the European countries, but also uh, preparing uh, for gas trading. And uh, already during last several months of uh, last year and this half of this year, he already start, already start, not just intense, but already start building uh, storage facilities in Austria, uh, Germany, in some other countries, in uh, some East European countries. So you can see that there is a, some really serious movement, unlike uh, lazy Gazprom leadership, which were always late for everything and uh, was just thinking that everything will be as ever. Uh, but it, it's not so. Uh, the changes in the oil and gas markets are very fast, very fast. I, I was, uh, till uh, uh, today, I was a uh, week in the uh, hospital uh, but uh, for operation, but I demanded that five newspapers must be brought to me, to, to my <laughs> uh, room in, in, in hospital, because otherwise I will be lost, you know, because there are so many and so important changes in this that experts must be every day live in this. Well, I will stop. I will stop on this and I will give uh, some 20 minutes to you, uh, you uh, for uh, patients and answers. Please. Yeah. Well, please. Novatech is a well-known case of an independent gas company, but how many other independent gas companies are there? And when do you think the gas from monopoly will Will, will uh, reduce and in what way? Uh, as I told you, uh, they are taking uh, parts of internal market already from Gazprom, and uh, uh, this is irrespective that these companies who are changing the source of gas are, can be punished according contract. But uh, maybe if there was some pressure from government circles that no, I never heard that anybody was punished. Uh, about figures, uh, there are uh, proposition uh, that uh, Novatec uh, uh, himself is saying that by uh, 2015, uh, maybe we, uh, they will be in control of 15, 18 um, uh, percent of internal market. But, uh, uh, I think that it will be not uh, the final aim, uh, internal market, because you see Yamal and LNG. What does it mean? That you can uh, uh, build, and they are uh, going to build um, at least one or two lines of LNG uh, enterprise uh, in Yamal, and then take by ships, by tankers, gas tankers, uh, outside. They don't need even pipe, you know, controlled by Gazprom. But uh, at the same time, I, I cannot avoid that first deputy uh, prime minister, Mr. Igor Sechin, uh, he uh, managed somehow, uh, he was insisting on these two years, but not was, uh, no, uh, with no success, but this time he was successful to insist that Gazprom must not uh, individually control and uh, reject or not reject gas from independence. Uh, the, the rest of independence, uh, there is a group of oil companies which are also engaged in um, like Loop Oil and some uh, uh, um, Rosneft. Uh, and there are small independents, uh, insignificant, but if you join them, uh, they have uh, at least uh, 12 or 14 percent of, of market predominantly local markets. Uh, but uh, tendency starts already uh, expanding, and uh, like it was 
with story of WTI, the small company went to, to NIMEX and then changed the whole uh, structure of uh, oil market, you know? It's, uh, everything big has some small beginning. Well, if you look at the predicted uh, supply and demand of both oil and gas with all the new capacities coming in, uh, Brazil, Iraq, uh, Russia, where would you predict the oil price based on fundamentals of oil speculation in two, three years? Uh, you know, this is a very difficult question. Uh, first of all, uh, gas is not coming from Brazil. We are concentrated on oil, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, but the problem is that uh, there is a big uh, um, discussion going on in the world about how gas prices must be, uh, gas prices formula must be created. Because till recently, uh, uh, the major rule was that gas follows uh, oil. And with delay of uh, um, four, five or six months with delay. Uh, and uh, many uh, countries are not satisfied with this because maybe oil is already going down, but uh, gas prices are still uh, on high level, you know? Uh, something must be done uh, with this. And um, uh, practically, uh, you know, the only country, uh, only two countries who are uh, free Till some time uh, to uh, decide about gas prices themselves uh, was uh, United States of America uh, and uh, Gas Island, as a uh, Financial Times called uh, UK, uh, because uh, till uh, 2005, uh, UK was net exporter oil and gas, but since then, they lost this position, and they start uh, being uh, in, uh, netto importers. And they immediately changed their uh, uh, thoughts about liberalism, because before this, they insisted that there must be a liberal uh, spot market and the gas-to-gas uh, uh, -gas prices, uh, not gas-to-oil prices. Uh, and, uh, but when they start importing everything, oil and gas, then immediately they started uh, um, uh, uh, signing the contracts, long-term contracts. They fight it uh, several decades against long-term contracts, but immediately. They not allowed uh, uh, Norway to interfere with the, their oil uh, or their gas uh, into the territory of UK, but then they signed two long-term contracts with Norway. And now no, no, Norway's uh, uh, gas, 40% uh, of Norway's gas is going to the UK. So you, can, you see, uh, it depends on the real situation in, in uh, production, uh, in upstream uh, of these countries. Uh, UK is on decline. Uh, and uh, uh, Japanese, and uh, Northeast Asian countries, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, they are still adherent of the uh, time, uh, gas prices to, to oil, oil prices. So there is a discussion, but not, not real movement of a change. Uh, my, uh, uh, broadly to answer your question, uh, my opinion is that there is a time to make uh, some efforts, joint efforts, not divided efforts. OPEC is on one side, and uh, OECD countries are on the other side, and so on. But round table and deep discussion, maybe it takes two, three years or uh, more, but to come to a discussion that uh, oil is not potato, not milk, not t-shirt, it's strategic uh, commodity and there must be new rules of uh, oil trading in the world and gas trading in the world. Only this can help. And uh, I found out uh, when I was in Abu Dhabi recently uh, with my uh, paper uh, that uh, many uh, OPEC countries are on the, uh, join this opinion. 
they are joining. But they are complaining that America is not responding to these negotiations. Well, yes, please. Oil exports are clearly an important part of Russia's current GDP, and, and where do you see nuclear in the long-term energy policy of, of Russia to, to you know, domestic markets? You know, uh, we were uh, too dependent on oil and uh, gas uh, because it was practically 40% of our budget was coming from these two sources. And uh, it's not normal, of course. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, are now, maybe you, if you have possibility to follow uh, uh, a long speeches of our uh, leaders, uh, be it President Kibri for uh, Prime Minister Putin, they are now insisting that we must make transition. It takes years, but transition from uh, crude oil and gas economy to the innovative uh, technology. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I agree that our future uh, will be secured not by oil and not by gas, but uh, by our brains. You know, we really have very uh, good brains. And uh, it's uh, uh, said to me, traveling all around the world, uh, that uh, not only to Europe, not only to America, uh, there are thousands and dozens of thousands of our uh, uh, specialists uh, in uh, uh, programming. Uh, uh, but suddenly I found out, even before uh, conclusion of uh, uh, establishing diplomatic relations with South Korea, because in 1989 I was invited uh, to a huge conference, uh, international conference there, and uh, I, I was not able to go from Moscow directly to Seoul via uh, Japan because we have no diplomatic relations. And uh, one vice president of Samsung Chebol, you know Chebol, it's like a graphic uh, structure in South Korea, uh, was sitting uh, after conference, was sitting at the table uh, with me, and uh, we were talking about uh, uh, how uh, good are fundamental research in Russia and how good are practical uh, 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 use of this uh, in South Korea. He was silent, listening to me, and then proposed to go to his uh, headquarters, Samsung headquarters in the Seoul. And what I found out, he opened one door, and there was 12 people sitting. Do you know who are there? They are all Slavic, uh, from Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, Without any diplomatic relations, they managed somehow to invite these people to them. And if you take into account that Samsung is the most advanced cable in, in South Korea, most advanced, most progressive, and so on, and I paid attention later on, too, to this problem, and I found out uh, two years ago that there are already not 12, there are 120 permanent Slavic uh, people sitting there, and there are hundreds uh, shuttle uh, who are coming, getting some orders, uh, and uh, then submitting orders, getting money, and that kind of stuff. So we are feeding practically everybody in the world, and we are not using them, not able to use them in, inside my country. This is our future. Yes, please. Great oil wealth has been for some countries a great blessing and for others a curse. What countries do you see who are managing their oil wealth the best? Who's doing the worst? And what can we learn? Of, co of course, uh, I'm an admirer of Norway, Start oil. I studied in details everything from the first uh, steps of this country in the early 70s. Uh, and uh, till today, uh, this is the best model, but you, 
we cannot just took Norway model 100% and because in Norway lives uh, more than 4 million people and uh, it's small country not depending on oil by the way because they have hydroelectric stations and everything and uh, they are not in the such a need of oil like Russia and Russia is huge country uh, and uh, self-destroyed during Yeltsin's time. Practically, ha Russian economy was halved during Yeltsin's period. And uh, we have a lot of tasks, and that's why we must not just say, okay, we are not going to deal with oil and gas business. No, we, we are in no such position. But slow movement away from dominant position of oil and gas in our economy, it's necessary. It's necessary because uh, uh, in America, uh, oil sector takes something around less than 3% in, in GDP, you know, in GDP. That's why America is prefers to keep their oil and gas behind the surface. It's since Roosevelt, since uh, end of uh, Second World War, uh, and uh, uh, to import uh, uh, oil. Uh, there was starting importing also gas, but now they found shale gas, and, uh, but uh, I am not optimistic about shale gas. Uh, I am joining the head of Chevron company who said that he is not going to deal with shale gas because it's, in reality, it's ex more expensive than um, uh, traditional uh, gas, and uh, that uh, uh, there is uh, some study which showed uh, during uh, analyzed during last three years in, in America uh, what happened with the shale. Uh, you drill well. Uh, uh, next year, it is it gives you uh, thirty seven percent less gas than before. And the third year, it gives 50% less. So you must drill an hour, an hour, an hour, and real price is growing and growing. So uh, practically seriously engaged in shale gas in the United States are uh, independent uh, uh, companies. Well, uh, you and then you, I guess. According to some European experts, Russia has already reached the peak of coal production and the, vol the volume of coal production will be decreasing. That is why it is now more reasonable to invest in the Russian coal sector. What do you think about this? You know, um, I'm, I like to read uh, not only big book of uh, Daniel Yergin Price, but also his articles. And in one of his articles in Newsweek two years ago or three years ago, he said, in my life, I five times come across the statement that there is a peak, there is an end of oil and everything. But since then, oil is growing, oil reserves are growing and growing and growing. I heard myself many discussions and with saying such a thing that there is no more elephants. Elephants is big oil uh, fields. And more, no, no elephants, only, only small. Uh, then came Brazil with real elephants, you know, offshore elephants. And uh, then came the Kashagan in Kazakhstan, which is also uh, yet not producing industrial, uh, but uh, consortium of foreign companies are working. Not so good working, but still working, and uh, this is huge. So, our eastern Siberia, uh, practically during Soviet time, was uh, studied only 80% of its territory. 80%. So, how do you know what is there in, in, in this place? How do you know? And even when uh, you are talking about uh, 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 fields which are on its peak, there are still two thirds of oil uh, under the 
surface, not. So it, it takes, if you take history of oil technology, uh, it takes some years to increase the level of technological approach, innovation approach, and then you can squeeze from uh, soil more oil and more oil. And uh, this will be enough for decades, for decades. Well, uh, your question. Sorry. Uh, you've commented on what I call the commercial aspects of oil and gas. Would you care to comment on the political aspects? Specifically, you mentioned Shell, BP, some other multinationals that have taken some hits with what's going on. Uh, the fact that when you talk about Europe wanting to find other sources, well, there's a good reason for why they were feeling somewhat threatened with the Ukrainian issues and gas lines and so forth. Can you have the political issues in your mind been addressed and settled? Do the uh, Westerners feel comfortable dealing? Outside this university, uh, in the Institute of World Economy and International Relations, where I spent 22 years, I have small center of energy studies, and it's precisely concentrated on geopolitical aspects of what you are asking now. Because Oil and politics are intertwined. Oil and, uh, and gas also is intertwined. You can separate them. Uh, and without this, you can uh, uh, explain correctly what happened in January uh, 2009 and before 2006 uh, between Ukraine and so it's, it's, uh, um, you know, it's really, for me, it's very simple because uh, I know Ukraine, I travel a lot of Ukraine, and I know there is no real democracy. Like I insist in that, we are st still not fully democratic country, you know. I insisted during Gorbachev's time, and I insisted in my publications, not just oral speeches. Uh, it's historical process. It's historical democracy took um, 180 years in Great Britain after Great Revolution, Great British Revolution. It took such a lot of time to come to more or less, more or less satisfying uh, shape of democracy. Uh, it, it took 80, 80 uh, years in France after uh, French Revolution. Uh, it's speeding up, history is speeding up. It's, process, but still you need time, you need time. You cannot bring in a case uh, 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 or some pocket here, democracy to one country and impose. American tried to do so. Some senators are not hiding, visiting Ukraine, saying that uh, they see Ukraine as a member of NATO and so on and so on. But during this time, when Ukraine became independent from Russia, and Russia independent from Ukraine and other, uh, we spent $45 billion uh, in a cheap price of gas for Ukraine. We must, must pay, yes, I am finished. Uh, we must spend money for Ukraine, giving them cheap gas and many other things, and you are going to come and to arrange political order in Ukraine as you are. Well, thank you.